reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, advocate to be with you always. Whoever loves me keeps my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. Those who do not love me do not keep my words. Yet the word you hear is not mine, but that of the Father who sent me. I have told you this while I am with you. The Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I told you. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we uh, celebrate the Feast of Pentecost, the gift of um, the Holy Spirit to the Church, to God's people. Um, We have um, much uh, information in the scriptures about God the Father and God the Son, but very little about God the Holy Spirit. We have words in the scriptures attributed to God the Father. Jesus speaks words to us in the Bible as well. There really aren't any words in scripture attributed to the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit's a little bit mysterious in some ways. And since most of the Bible deals with the time up to the ascension of Jesus into heaven, there isn't, in a sense, a whole lot written after that. And so not very much, in a sense, written about the Holy Spirit, about what the Holy Spirit does, how the Holy Spirit helps, or what the Holy Spirit, um, how he interacts and works in our lives. And yet, from the scriptures of today, we do pick up at least three things that the Holy Spirit does, three powerful ways the Spirit is present in our life. In the Gospel today from John, Jesus says two of those things. He says the Holy Spirit will teach you everything. Secondly, the Holy Spirit will remind you of all that I told you. And then from the second reading from the eighth chapter of Paul's letter to the Romans, we learn that this is a spirit of adoption, not a spirit of slavery or of fear, a spirit of adoption that allows us to call God our Father. And so those are some of the things that the Holy Spirit does based on the scriptures today. So first of all, Jesus says that the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will teach you everything. Meaning, we don't know everything, right? We don't know it all. No matter what our age or our status in life, we don't know it all. When it comes to religion, when it comes to spiritual truth, when it comes to faith and morals. We do know some things, but we should always have the attitude of being a student rather than thinking that we're the master or the teacher. Yes, there's quite a bit that we know when it comes to God, but we don't know it all. And so therefore, we should be docile, meaning teachable, right? Good students who know that we still have much to learn. So that's the first thing the Holy Spirit needs to do for you and me still, is to teach us, but we're only teachable if our spirit is humble and docile. Not if we think that we know everything that there is to know about faith and morals in the religious and spiritual life. Secondly, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will remind you of all that I told you. So it's, um, especially as we get older, very likely that we forget, right? We forget a lot of things as the years go by and as we get older and older. Some things not quite so important, some a little bit more important. So it's nice that we have somebody who reminds us, right? Somebody who reminds us of all the things that I've forgotten which are many, many things. Um, The Spirit's going to remind you of all that Jesus has told you. So in one way that comes to you, Jesus told you things through the Scripture. You know more Bible quotes and stories and Scripture than you probably realize. You probably know quite a bit about the Bible. You know the stories. And so the Holy Spirit reminds you of, of what Jesus has said, what's in the Scriptures. Things you may have heard before in the Scriptures that help you when you're stuck in life, when you're not looking for words of comfort or consolation or looking for some kind of guidance in your life. The Holy Spirit reminds you of what you know in the scriptures. But the Holy Spirit also reminds you of what Jesus has told you outside of the Bible. Because Jesus doesn't only speak in the scriptures or only speak in the Bible. He hasn't stopped talking. He hasn't remained silent these past 2,000 years. He still speaks to you and to me. And so there are um, things in the life that you've picked up, insights that you have gleaned over the years that maybe you've forgotten, right? So, oh yeah, now I remember I've dealt with this sin before in my life, or I have felt this way before, I felt far away from God before, I know I can get through this. 
or these were the words of advice that I gave to someone else, now I need to take them for myself. Meaning that sometimes we picked up some insights in life and we forget. We forget about the sins and temptations we've overcome. We forget about some of the obstacles that we've put behind us. And so the Holy Spirit reminds you of all that Jesus has told you, not just in Scripture, but throughout your spiritual life. Ways that you've overcome some difficulties in the past, some insights that you actually already have to um, maintain a strong faith life now and into the future. The Holy Spirit reminds you of everything that Jesus has told you. And then finally, as St. Paul says in his letter to the Romans, um, we receive the spirit of adoption. So the Holy Spirit is what makes us brothers and sisters of Jesus, sons and daughters of God. So Jesus makes that adoption a, a binding reality. It's almost like on one hand, there's the family of God the Father and God the Son. On the other side, it's all of us. And the bond between us is the Holy Spirit, the one that unites us together. And St. Paul says, whereas in the past, the attitude was the bond between God and human beings was one of slavery, of master and slave. Now, St. Paul says, actually that bond is father and son, father and daughter, brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. It's a family bond now. Whereas in the past, it was a spirit of a bond of slavery, which led to fear. So we're adopted um, by God, removed from slavery and fear. Um, slavery to what? Well, St. Paul would say slavery to the past useless spiritual and religious laws and rules, but also we're, we were slaved in a sense to fear. Maybe fear of dying in the past, and the Holy Spirit um, takes away, removes our fear of dying. Fear of sinning, fear of hell. Many people still live with a strong fear of hell, unfortunately, or f at least the fear of losing of heaven. The fear of separation from loved ones once you pass away or they pass away. I'm never going to see you again. Fear of not being forgiven. My sins are so big or so frequent or so many, I can't possibly be forgiven. Um, do you suffer from any of those fears? Are you enslaved to any of those fears? Fear of death, of hell, of your sins, of not being with loved ones? Are you enslaved to some of those fears? Because the Holy Spirit frees us from that. In, in place of slavery and fear, we are free and adopted. So there's still a bond between us and God, and now it's a bond of family. And this makes us free, allows us to be free to act like our family. We're free to act like God the Father and God the Son, to be faithful and holy just like they are, to love one another as God loves us. And St. Paul says, this family bond that we have now, it makes us heirs of heaven. So your inheritance is heaven. You're writ it's written into the will, right? And it's not going to be removed. You're in God's will forever. You're not going to be taken away. You are going to inherit eternal life in heaven. So does that make a difference in your life? What would your daily life look like if only those fears I mentioned were gone? If you lived with no fear of dying, of hell, of sins, of being, not being with loved ones, what would your daily life look like if only those fears were removed? Let alone all the other fears that you and I have, right? About things in life. But if only those fears were removed, what would your daily life be like? If you realized and if you lived as if you were an heir of heaven, might you be bothered a little bit less? Might you be a little more patient while driving? Might you be a little more patient with the um, personality traits or quirks of your spouse or of your family? Might you not be so upset when you don't get your way or maybe insist on it a little bit less? Might you view your sickness or bad health a little bit differently? Might you not worry so much about lack of money or things? How much more peaceful would your life be? How much peaceful would, your, would you live your daily life if you were free from some of those fears? If you lived as if you knew you were going to inherit heaven, no matter what, no matter what. In, in the end, this is not, we don't really use the Holy Spirit as much as we use God the Father and God the Son. We don't offer a lot of prayers to the Holy Spirit. And yet that Holy Spirit has been the reality of the world for the past 2,000 years. And that Holy Spirit, which is a different 
a new kind of bond with God and with one another, but not just a bond between us and God. It influences the way that you and I see life, the way that we, that we um, look out and how we live our life and what we value, what's important and what's not important, and how we can have faith in place of fear. In, in the end, um, God, Jesus um, has sent us this Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit that teaches you everything, as long as you are a docile student. The Holy Spirit reminds you of all that Jesus has told you, and the Holy Spirit of adoption, which truly makes you God's children, free from any fear.